So um, do you know what Thodex is? T-H-O-D-E-X. No. Okay. Do you know who Farouk Ozer is? No. Okay. So Thodex is, uh, it was a cryptocurrency exchange in Turkey. Um, it was really popular um, in 2020, something like that. Um, 2021, right around there. Obviously, during the crypto boom, it was really, really popular. But Thodex uh, has a really interesting story. And the founder of Thodex, um, there's a lot of mystery. Okay, let's just put it that way. There's a, there's a huge amount of mystery around this guy, Farouk Ozer, who, who founded Kodak, uh, Thodex. Um, so I, I, I'm... I'm uh, there, there's a really, really great article published in Wired um, called, uh, let's see what it was called real quick. Well, let's not, it doesn't matter about the name. Um, anyway, so basically in 2021, on April 20th, so 420, 2021, um, Farouk Ozer boards a flight to Albania with a USB flash drive with over $2 billion worth of cryptocurrency on it hmm. and so he boards this flight to albania and by all accounts disappears gone nobody knows what happens to him um a few days later uh, basically over over a few the, several days um nobody knows what happened happened to farouk and everybody on thodex realizes that they can't access their funds they can't access their crypto Everybody starts freaking out. What's going on? And they basically look look up this, uh, or no, they they're all tweeting at him. Basically, they're all like, "Hey, what's going on, man? Where's our crypto? What happened?" He issues this letter. Oh, he, he just basically posts a tweet, basically saying something to the effect of, uh, "We had like a, a cyber attack. Um, something has caused you know big fluctuations within the company account." like whatever that means. And uh, we're, we're working to resolve it. Um, we're going to make sure that there is no user suffering, no, no like user uh, damages or anything. Like nobody's going to lose their money. That's what he, he basically says. He tweets this out. And then after this, there's nothing. Nobody hears anything from him. And, you know, customer accounts are uh, still frozen. You know, nobody can access their funds or the crypto. The Turkish police basically go on a manhunt and they're trying to find Farouk. They arrest, they can't find him. They arrest 62 people, um, many of them within the company, the Thodex company, two of them being uh, his brother and sister who don't technically work for the company, but they are heavily involved with the company. Um, and so what happens is, is over the next like several months, nobody knows what happened to this guy He's missing. Um, everybody's looking for him. There's all this public outrage and allegations. Um, and basically, uh, there's, there's a lot of like mystery and public speculation. So this guy's gone. Nobody can access their funds. They're trying to find him. Turkish law enforcement arrests 62 people and they throw his brother and sister in jail. And they're just like awaiting the arrest of their brother because they can't, they can't start the trial or, or figure out what's going on because they don't know, like nobody knows what's happening. Um, and so what happens is, is like there are people that try to tra like trace the blockchain and see what happened with all these funds. They can't, you know, they can't figure out what actually happened. Um, different people hypothesize that Thodex uh, was a money laundering company. Basically what they think is that Thodex was offering extremely low commissions on all of their trades for, for new people. They had all of these giveaways and promotions and things. And people were like, what's going on with this company? How are they able to do this so cheaply? So a lot of people suspected that they were doing money laundering. So basically, do you know what money, money, uh, money laundering is, Alex? I believe it's when people run un illegal funds through a business accounting, you know, uh, saying this business made this all this money, you know, my laundromat made $150,000 because you made 150,000 through your drug money, you know, and you put it into a, a business. I think that's what drug money is. Or yeah, exactly. Basically, small businesses that accept lots of cash transactions or 
I mean, in this case, crypto non-traceable transactions um, can, yeah, they, they basically account for all of those aware. revenue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They say all these revenues came from our business and we're going to pay taxes on it. And then therefore those funds are now cleaned. So um, that's what a lot of people were speculating. Um, there are all, lots of people speculating that he just absconded with the funds and he's just, you know, you know, floating around the world. Nobody knows where he is. He could be in Albania still. He could be, you know, on a tropical villa in Thailand. He could be anywhere in the world and nobody knows what's happening. So mm -hmm. basically his brother and sister are just in jail awaiting his capture. And, and some people think that he actually colluded with the Turkish government to do money laundering. Like he was part of like organized crime. Um, and there were like corrupt people in the Turkish government helping him do this. There were other people who think that uh, corrupt people in Turkish government or like the heads of some organized crime agencies killed him. And they basically took all the crypto um, because they could and they could blame it on him. And that's another thing that people thought. And they, nobody had nobody had any clue where he was. Right. So the Albanian police have been looking for him because he was in Albania, right? That was, the, that was where he went. And people were wondering, okay, well, why is he in Albania? What's the purpose of this? So he did tell people before he left that he's going to go try to sell the company. And he had investors in Albania that were looking to buy the company from him. And so that's, that was his, like, uh, his alleged reason for going to Albania. And sure enough, after he arrives in Albania, nobody can find him. But a year after he disappears... Um, Albanian police have been tailing this like BMW that they've they've noticed uh, they believe to be um, Farouk's and they tail it and they find they end up finding him. They find Farouk. So a, a year after his disappearance, they find him in Albania in 2022. He was captured by Albanian police at an, uh, like a villa in Vlo uh, Vlore, Albania, which I believe it's it's pretty nice. Um and he was extradited to Turkey where he faced charges related to the, the scandal. Um, and what's crazy is that during the trial, when he finally is able to break his silence and, and like, and like explain, explain himself, he basically says, um, you know, I, I was not trying to abscond with the funds. Um, the company was actually not profitable. It was not a successful company. And, Basically, the company was just a little bit more valuable than all of the funds that were that customers had even had deposited. So basically, our company was just even a, just a little bit more valuable than the actual funds that we had in the company. And so they were able to pay off um, while while he was missing. He oh, this is this was very strange. I should have added this while he was still disappeared. Um, he basically had some lawyer in Turkey stand in for him as like a power of attorney, meaning like they could speak on his behalf and do and act on his behalf while he was missing. And the, the, the attorney did not have to disclose where he was. Nobody could figure out where he was or if he was even alive, but they, they just like this attorney just comes out on Twitter and says, I am the power of attorney for Farouk. And a lot of people were wondering like, well, is he even alive? Do we know this person's legit? How do we know they're not actually part of one of these organized crime or the corrupt government officials and they, you know, killed Farouk and they're actually just trying to pin it on him. And this attorney is um, just kind of like the face of that. Well, it turns out the attorney was, was tweeting and saying, uh, if you legally recant your claim against Ozer, the, the founder of Farouk, if you legally recant your claim against the company, then we will reimburse you for any funds that you you're unable to access right now. We'll, we'll send you the funds. And so they were able to reimburse like $11 million worth of funds or something like that to over 2,000 claimants. Um, and so what he basically says in this court appearance is he says, I was not absconding with the funds. We even tried to pay people back. We, we paid back a good chunk of all of the claimants. Um, and there was no money laundering involved. We were actually just an unprofitable company and I was trying to sell the company. And he, he basically, it was very strange, this, this court like defense of his because it doesn't really say like what happened to all the funds it doesn't really say like um you know it doesn't explain much more than like oh i'm i'm just like a naive founder of a tech startup and i the company was failing and i was trying to sell it and after all these accusations came out i thought i was like if i had feared for my life so i was hiding 
that's basically what his defense was. I was hiding because I had feared for my life. And, you know, there was all this strange activity in the company account. So I had to freeze the funds. And that was his defense. Basically, we had to freeze the funds. There was all this strange activity. And I was in hiding. And um, I, that, that defense didn't really work well in the courts. And uh, <laughs> he ended up in, in September of 2023, he received a sentence of, um, this is crazy, 11,196 years. So he's not getting out anytime soon. Um, and yeah, that was crazy. So basically the, yeah, the incident highlighted kind of the volatile nature of, of crypto markets and, and the regulatory changes. Um, yeah, and, and crypt, uh, crypto in Turkey has only been even more popular because they've had kind of crazy inflation even since then. So people still are investing in crypto in Turkey. Uh, but it's kind of a crazy tale like this. And he was only 20, uh, 27 when this, when, when this all happened. Um, I guess he was like, you know, 26 through 27 uh, by the, you know, he was 26 and then 27 when he got caught. But kind of this crazy story of how this guy absconded with over $2 billion in crypto and was allegedly, you know, doing it not for bad reasons, but, you know, when he gets caught, that's the explanation. Um, I have no idea if these people have even been paid back. I don't even know what's happening. This article doesn't really explain that. But um, anyway, it's kind of a crazy story. What do you think? No, that's wild. I mean, that's wild. Like, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, one thing I'll add here, for those of you who don't know, a crypto exchange is basically a place where people can trade crypto with each other. So Alex, if you want to sell your crypto, I can buy it. And that's what Fodex allows us to do. And um, basically, in order for both of us to trade our crypto, we both have to put it into the Fodex wallet, essentially. And so if you and I don't have access to our crypto, we basically lost our money, essentially. Like we can't access the, the, the store of value or whatever we're putting into the Thodex wallet. Um, and so it allows, you know, uh, it allows the owners of that exchange to kind of be, you know, they, they have total control of it if they really want to. Um, and there's not really a lot of regulation around it. So um, what happens is, you know, when, when Farouk flees to Albania with all of the crypto on his, on his flash drive, um, he basically has total control of all, everybody's crypto and they can't access it. So um, he disappears thinking, you know, because all of the accusations and threats, he, he fears for his life. So he claims that he goes into hiding and that's why he wasn't, you know, the, he couldn't be found. And so he like, he took a taxi down to the southern coast of Albania and was like living in a villa down there. And um, yeah, basically evading, evading law enforcement. And why did he go into, why did he like fly there and? run away with everyone's yeah, so, money so he was he flew he flew to albania the you know the reason he gave was that um he flew to albania to sell the company because there were investors in albania that wanted to buy the company so he was going to meet with them um, but then once all these accusations came out because people couldn't access their funds he basically said he basically said oh i'm going to go he, he didn't say this but he went into hiding because he thought he you know he feared for his life that uh, or, or that he was going to get thrown in jail for, for a bad reason. So he just went into hiding essentially and had billions of dollars worth of crypto. And so what, what he said was that um, when, when there was all these accusations and people you know, had a bunch of legal claims against the company, he hired this lawyer essentially in Turkey to tweet out and say, hey, if anybody wants to be reimbursed for their losses, um, Re, uh, recant your your uh, retract your legal claim against the company, and we will we will send you the funds directly. And so what happens is is they basically send funds from this thumb drive that he has all of this you know for lack for simplicity he has tons of money in this thumb drive, and so mm -hmm. they drain they drain that thumb drive, uh, the company account um, of money to pay back a bunch of claimants. They pay back I think eleven million U.S. dollars worth. And supposedly there's still, you know, $1.9 billion, or I guess it's almost still $2 billion worth of crypto that's, you know, gone. And he says that once he paid back um, all of this, uh, all of these claimants, he took the, <laughs> the thumb drive and threw it into the Ionian Sea. So once it was empty, he just threw it away and got rid of it. 
Why? Which is kind of strange. I mean, that's that he said like once it, once that we once we drained the account, I just threw it away. I have no idea why. Maybe maybe because he thought that if he didn't have it, then he wouldn't be culpable for, um, yeah, like absconding with the funds because you know if he didn't have it. But it, and he admitted to doing that, so there's still, uh, you know, I guess he would still be in trouble for that. Um, but yeah, that's basically that's his story. <laughs> he said that he got what? rid of the thumb drive. When did all this happen again? This happened from 20, like basically right up until September of 2023. So like this okay. past fall um, is when he got sentenced and he was found in, I assume, spring of 2022. And he absconded with all the funds in 2021, uh, April of 2021. So $2 billion were lost pretty much of people's crypto. It seems that way. It seems that way based on the article, it, it, they didn't really make any, that, it's, it's honestly still kind of confusing. Like there's not a lot of clarity on what actually happened there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Interesting. Kind of interesting I don't have story. too much. That's just a crazy story. So guys in the comments, feel free to contribute with any uh, thoughts or additional points that yeah, you guys Yeah. What did I miss? What did I get wrong? Here? Questions. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I have another.